Greetings and welcome. My name is Stan Husted, and uh, we do invite you to another brief presentation of what we call The Master Entrepreneur, a podcast radio experience, and we combine it with our What It Takes, our WIT, W-I-T, WIT, What It Takes video presentation, kind of a teach-about session, as we call it. And today we are right at the very last Sunday of 2019, and we have uh, declared that we are already in 2020. The rest of the world will celebrate on Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday morning, but uh, we have already begun to enjoy and prepare ourselves for both the opportunity and the possible calamities that might befall the world and our life and business in 2020. Obviously, we live in perilous and uh, crisis times. How are we as Christian entrepreneurs going to face the future, and how are we going to be uh, bold and brave and strong in the world that is before us? We'd like to try to answer some of those questions and come up with some skills and perhaps some strategies and uh, some spirit force beliefs that will help us do that well, very well. My question today is obviously meant to trick you into following the rest of our time. What do uh, Trader Joe's and McDonald's and John Deere have in common? And what do they have in common with you as a small business, family, Christian entrepreneur trying to make things happen in the world today? Well, let's start. <laughs> Trader Joe's, McDonald's, John Deere, uh, in some respects, they are all in the food business. Well, certainly Trader Joe's is in the food business, McDonald's in the fast food business. And of course, much of that incredible machinery that is produced by John Deere is used in the farming, in the industry that grows the uh, plentiful amounts of wonderful food that we particularly have in our part of the world and which we wish we could share in greater and better amounts with the rest of the world. But those three major companies just decided to do something rather unusual. Now, I've talked to you many times about uh, the podcast movement. And since I'm not necessarily the inventor, but certainly one of the originators and the original producers in the thing called podcast, a personal on-demand radio broadcast on the Internet, and as we give birth to the Master Entrepreneur iPod radio broadcast program, and in 2020, our life will be very different because we will be helping many people just like you and your business to discover how they can use podcasting in their business. Well, surprisingly, <laughs> Trader Joe's, McDonald's, and John Deere, last week it was announced that they are now producing podcasts. Now, that surprised me, and I'm sure it surprised other people who know what a podcast is all about. It tends to be something that is used to brand yourself, to market yourself, and it, it tends to be in more of the experiences and services, not necessarily in the basic commodities, such as heavy machinery, <laughs> such as fast food, and perhaps even the retail trade in food like Trader Joe's. Why would they be doing podcasts? Well, you're going to discover that they have discovered that a lot of the traditional marketing, the radio has less and less impact as fewer and fewer people are tuning in to radio. Now, they still have a huge audience. However, it is not growing. Where the uh, podcast audience is growing almost exponentially. And there are some very good reasons for that. 
uh, newspapers, magazines, all of the various print, or we call the dead tree, you know, piece of paper, nice piece of paper. Uh, dead tree marketing is becoming more expensive, and certainly uh, it's economically difficult and environmentally uh, sus you know, just challenging. And so more and more people are trying to figure out how do they do the connecting and the creating of an experience and uh, moving their product, their services, and their goods into the attention of people who have way too much sound and fury and information in front of them and less and less time. Well, they've decided, and I'm anxious and eager to see what they do, I can guarantee you they will probably do it wrong at first, because most people do, but then you learn and you begin to catch on, and that's what I always teach people. You don't, you know, ready, aim, fire. You usually today in marketing, you fire, aim, and see if you're ready. <laughs> Think about that. Just let that, as we say, sit on your head for a while. You have to do it. You have to experiment. You have to try. You have to fail. You have to try again and fail again. And then finally, through small trials, small errors, and sometimes big mistakes, you decide what works best for you, the audience you're seeking to connect to, and the story and the stuff that you bring together in a way that creates value so that people actually do what they would prefer not to do, and that is to spend money with you. They'd prefer to keep their money. But because you have something they need, want, or desire, or find helpful, they will uh, separate themselves from their money and give it to you if the value is profound and very personal. And perhaps even something that helps them change their life. What could that be? Now, you may not decide to be a podcaster. However, let me tell you, as your coach and as your guide and as a Christian entrepreneur colleague, you're going to have to figure out what to do about it. You may reject it, as one man said to me. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Fine. He's wrong, but for him, it's right, because that's the way he feels, and if that's the way he feels, that's what he should do. I will not try and talk him into anything he doesn't really believe in. But here's the point. Even if you don't want to do podcasting, you're going to have to do what podcasts do. Let me tell you what that is. What that are. What they are. First of all, you're going to have to be a storyteller. Because all effective communication, as Jesus knew, comes from, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, in a place far, far away, a long time ago, once upon a time, in the beginning, God. You're going to have to be a storyteller. Because if you want people to pay attention to what you have and what you do and how you serve and how you can help them, you're going to have to tell stories. Figure out how to do that and who should do it and then how you get them to hear. Did you hear what I said? Hear your story. Not just read your story. Hear your story. The second thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to be a teacher. All good marketing is designed to help people today make some changes. And one of the best ways to help people change is to, in a very engaging and friendly and not necessarily a challenging, but perhaps a questioning way, teach people new things, new ideas, and new ways. The best marketing is not in your face, shout, you need this, by gosh and by golly. It's, have you considered this? May I tell you about this? Would this be helpful or useful? Could this be some information that might be useful to you? Let me tell you how the world and how those products and how things work. 
You're going to have to be a storyteller, and you're going to have to be a teacher, and you're going to have to be a performer. Truly, this is the experience economy, and you're going to have to have people, not just artificial intelligence robots, who, by the way, aren't nearly as good as we want them to be when it comes to creating relationships, because only God's people, spirit force people, can have relationships. They still need people who teach, who smile, who connect, who perform, who uh, tell stories. You're going to need a performer. One of the things we're going to offer you is the ability to step forward and kind of be the person who says, let me tell you the story. Let me help you. Uh, we are being asked increasingly, hard to believe for kind of an old guy with no hair and funny glasses, but uh, we seem to connect with people in such a way that uh, they'll listen to us and uh, more and more organizations and missions and Ministries and people around the world are asking us to stand. Would you be the spokesperson? Stand the spokesman for our company. Uh, uh, be human. Be real. Be authentic. And uh, help us connect with real human beings, real people. Well, that's what we do. And I think we do it pretty well. But I just wanted to remind you as we go right into 2020, and by the way, we're going to have a, a few more programs uh, following this one. The next one is very much related to a secret Jesus knew about marketing and business, and I'm going to call it the JTB Factor. JTB Factor. And we'll tell you a little bit about that. I think you'll be fascinated by it. One of the great secrets Jesus knew about sales and marketing and building a world-class company that's lasted 2,000-plus years. We're going to talk to you a lot about that. We are going to begin to have a whole series of programs that we believe you will find no place else and that they will be powerful and creative and useful for your life, your ministry, your uh, following Jesus, your experience. In fact, we're all about helping you not learn truths about the Christian faith. We're all about helping you figure out how to follow Jesus. That's right, in your life and in your business, so that you can see him more clearly, follow him more nearly, and love him more dearly, because he is the source of the spirit force that'll teach you how to live forever with God's creative power. That's what it's all about. So, that's what we'll be about. And as a result of that, we have some promises to make. Your new year should not be about predictions. <laughs> you want to make a God laugh, tell him your plans and your predictions. We do want that our life will be very different at this time next year. We're doing a number of things. And uh, by God's good grace, my life and the life of my children, the life of my family, and maybe your life too, will be profoundly different. If things go wrong, uh, well, they could be uh, profoundly wrong in the right way, <laughs> profoundly wrong in some way, but they shouldn't be because God is on our side and we'll probably be different in many good ways, and I trust that'll be true for you, too. We believe it will be soon, too. But we're going to do this. We're going to make some promises. So we don't make uh, predictions. We don't make expectations. We don't uh, necessarily make resolutions, but we do make some promises, and we'd like to make some promises for you as we begin 2020. I'd love to hear from you. What would you like to do better? How would you like your life to be better? How can I help you? Because I believe my team and I, we can. We can help you in your life and business. So just write to me at stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. If you have trouble with the spelling, then do radioedge77 at gmail.com. 
RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. Raise your hand and say, Stan, I have a question. Would you help me? <laughs> Stan, I'd like to be on your program because there's a good chance you will be in 2020. Again, my name is Stan Houston. You can reach out to me at tcenglobal.org, tcenglobal.org. We could use your help as we approach the new year. If you'd like to sponsor us, we would be grateful to talk about that, and we would welcome your sponsorship of our work. Uh, tcenglobal.org slash contribute now, tcenglobal.org slash contribute now. And we would be grateful for your help. Or just again, write to me, stanhouston at gmail.com. Uh, tell me how I can help you. And I guarantee you that we can help each other. May it go well for you. May that be part of what we do for you every day. We want to bless you in every way and in every way we can. And that things will truly go well for you. And this could possibly be one of the best years ever. Make it so. Bye for now.